this because he was actually raised by people. We know that much for sure because it's well, human imprinted, but we don't know why. So we don't know okay. whether somebody found him as a baby, thought they could raise him, and when he looked like an adult, they like, let him go, or whether somebody had him as a pet and then let him go. But we know that he ended up uh, in somebody's backyard, and he was kind of harassing the family. So he was playing in the sandbox with the kids, and then when mom opened the door and called the kids in for dinner, Flint flew in. Kept coming in and through every open door, every open window. Oh wow! So they called the authorities. They called the rescue team to come out and pick up Flint and take him into wildlife rehabilitation. But he was so used to people that he didn't care to be around other birds. He'd hang out with them when nobody was looking. But as soon as a human walked by, he'd fly towards them. And he was constantly calling for humans. So he, he's human imprinted. Thinks he's just like us. So if he couldn't go back to the wild, that was almost the end of his story, almost the end of his life, until they called us and asked if we'd be interested in a human imprinted pigeon for our education program. And so he's gonna live out the rest of his days with us, which could be like 30 years. And so uh, speaking of wildlife, is that the organization that you're? Yeah, so we are, uh, permanent sanctuary to animals that can't be released to the wild. Okay. Uh, and we have a focus on wildlife education. So we yeah. travel all over the province teaching people about Ontario wildlife mm -hmm. uh, and particularly animals that have stories like Flint so that we can tell people what to do if they find an animal in distress or yeah. that is acting oddly. There.